object-oriented programming class diagram part two. So we uh, were discussing how to draw class with the UML class diagram. And now if we think about terms like university, head of department, rector, school department, dean, these are definitely related to the university world. But the how? So uh, could we use some kind of a method to formalize and make a clearer picture of these terms? So university is the highest uh, unit and each unit has a leader. So university has a rector, school has a dean and department has a head of department. And uh, this is quite clear. So could we draw this so that every programmer, a programmer would understand it in the same way? Now they are here on the right side of the screen and the, it is clear when I, I am describing that the university is the highest level, it has a rector, but if I'm just uh, giving these uh, six terms to some person in Peru or South Africa or Singapore, it's not clear that he or she does understand it the same way than I do. So we need to design and define relationships between classes and that's that's definitely part of the object-oriented programming. We have a lot of classes, we have a lot of attributes and methods in those classes. We need to draw them in a, uh, in a way that everyone understands it. So dean is the same for school or faculty as a rector is for university and similarly head of department is the same for department and they are all leaders in in that unit and another thing is that university consists of schools and schools consist of departments and now i'm of course describing the lut university uh, different universities have different terms and different organizational structures but we are talking about lut here so here is a model, it's a class diagram where a university consists of schools and schools then consist of departments and uh, for example university it has a name, it has the name of the rector and it has methods of getting and setting these uh, names and, and, and rector's names. But as you can see, it's quite repeating. So we have a name attribute in university. We have a name attribute in school. We have a name attribute in department and we have get and set names for all of these three different names, which are different, but in a way they are quite the same. Should we have some kind of another better way to have these names? It's called inheritance in, in object-oriented world. And uh, if we think about university student, well, he or she is definitely a student. He or she is also human and mammal. So there is this kind of a uh, inheritance tree. And if we are uh, students, we inherit properties of human and mammal. We have hands, we have legs, we have eyes, these kind of things. So uh, could we use this kind of a behavior in, in the university world? So here is uh, those same classes, university, school and department. And they don't have any more these name and leader attributes. They are inheriting them from this unit class. Uh, this is a is a relationship. So department is a unit. School is a unit. University is a unit. So it inherits all the all the attributes and uh, 
methods from the unit. Uh, defining inheritance is natural for humans and makes modeling simpler and less chaotic. So if you compare this to the previous image where we had a lot of attributes and, uh, and methods, this is a simpler. It has these different uh, arrows there and diamonds. We will discuss it a bit soon, but it's still it's clear when you know what you are looking for. So what is this inheritance? Well, the idea behind this is that we organize classes to hierarchy tree. This tree is important term here. And subclass inherits properties of super, super class. So the subclass can be, for example, student and the super class is human. Uh, could we solve these things without inheritance? We had to define same things in a multiple class as we saw in the first example where we have the name attribute in in university, in uh, school and in department. That's not good. We are defining the same things over and over again. And then if we have to change one thing, we would have to make the change to every class. That's, that's not good. It creates problems. Or we could create a so a large class, for example, this unit would be our class. It would have everything inside of one class. And that doesn't sound smart either, because then we would have the uh, unit class could do all the things that university could do and all the things that the department could do. And then again, department has, has do not have that kind of rights to do things that the university does. So it's not wise. So inheritance makes it easy to create general classes and reuse parts of code. And this code reuse is extremely nice when you are inheriting features from other classes. So here, let's think about the case what kind of issues we might get when we would use inheritance. So mammals give birth to live animals and birds lay eggs. So they are definitely different things. So we as a humans, we are mammals, but we do not lay eggs. So we are giving birth to live babies. But what about duckbill? It's a mammal that lays eggs. So how could we handle that in a code? So basically we uh, build give birth method in a duck build that overrides the method defined in a sub super class here in mammal. So mammal is giving a birth to live animals, but then we have a duck bill which has this give birth method with, which will override the mammal method. And searching for implementation starts always from subclass and then it goes higher if no implementation is found. So if this duck pill would not have give bird method, then it would the compiler would uh, try to search and find it from mammal. If it would be not in mammal, then in chore data and uh, finally in animal. But as it found it's in duck pill, it will use that method and skip or at least uh, it, it, it will never reach this mammal version of give birth. So this is abstraction. We are looking the whole picture and handle details when it's necessary, when we are drawing class diagram, for example. And you don't always need a detailed pre a representation to understand the uh, program, how it works. We don't need to see 50,000 lines of code. We can see the user interface, we can see class diagrams and few methods, and then we understand how the uh, program is working. The less this abstract away. So abstraction is about hiding details so that we can see the whole picture. So we basically hide the trees so that we could see the forest 
which is more important when we want to see how everything is working. And in object-oriented programming, information hiding by encapsulation is one of the most important tools of abstraction. So we are hiding hiding things. We have learned that there is this private keyword where we, we can use and encapsulate data. And in, in, in class diagrams and in object-oriented programming, there are two ways of abstract things. We have is a and has a abstraction. So splitting something into smaller parts uses has a abstraction. Uh, for example, a car consists of an engine, wheels, chassis, gears, meaning there is some kind of a gear box. Uh, and then there is this specialization and it describes is a abstraction. So bicycle is a transportation device, student is a human, Ferrari is a car, uh, Falcon 9 is a rocket, Long March 6 is a rocket, etc. And short example, uh, car can be divided into smaller parts. So there is engine, chassis, gearbox, wheels, and each sub part can have a clear interface that other groups can use. So basically, if you are building a car, you don't need to build a gearbox or engine. You can go and buy, buy a ready engine and install it in your car. You, need, you don't need to know how the engine is working. You only need to uh, 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 install it so that the gearbox can be installed with the engine and then you have a, some kind of a control rail to co control how the engine is going. If we are talking about an engine that uses gasoline, of course electric cars are a bit different. They don't have gearboxes. Uh, yeah, so this is encapsulation. So we are hiding the functionality of the engines inside, but we are giving the uh, letting the engineers know how the engine should be installed, how it is used, but they don't need to know how the actual inside of the engine is working. Something more. So we are building models when we are using class diagrams and the model is used to simplify reality. We, when we are doing programs, we want to mimic or model the reality, but of course it's, it's not as extensive as the real reality. If we have a human class, it won't have, have red blood cells or, or heart or uh, every finger or DNA parts, but it, it will have something like name, age. It's just a model that simplifies reality. And uh, when we are solving problems, we usually require a lot of models. And modeling can happen in different levels of detail. So it depends if we have a human, we can have it a uh, name and age. That's very high level. Then we can have a model that has uh, um, hands and legs and head. That's a, a bit detailed, but we probably won't go to that deep detail where we would have a, a DNA object. That sounds a, a bit deep. So and definitely not too much into one model. If we have a one uh, class diagram that has everything I have been talking, it would be quite a large model, then that, that's not what we want. And a good model should uh, use some standard modeling language, such as UML. It should be easy to understand for the customer and the user. And it helps developer to understand how the system works and offer possibilities for abstraction. So we are using inheritance and has a uh, abstraction. So how do we identify different parts, which could be, for example, classes and attributes. So we are starting from the main class. If we are 
uh, development a something something like a sisu which is uh, having these uh, student grades and you can enroll to courses so what would be the main classes probably student is one one of the classes then there should be class uh, for the grade uh, for the course probably teachers and these kind of things these are the main classes and then when you are modeling deeper then you understand that there will rise some minor classes too and decide what other classes uh, uh, what kind of classes are associated with this uh, these main classes and what how do they collaborate and what information they have and these are the classes in the order of importance so in sisu case you would start with these uh, student and grade and course classes and it's not wise to have a large number of uh, associations and attributes so if you have a classes that are huge so you cannot fit them in your screen then you are probably doing something wrong then you can add the level of, of, of abstraction for example and system is simpler when it manipulates smaller amount of information and it's of course more easy to understand by the developer too so then defining these associations so how is the class communicating with another class and between two classes there should be association uh, if a class owns another class it controls another class it is connected somehow to other class it associates to other class it is part of another class it owns parts of another class is a member of another class or owns other classes in the model so then there is some some kind of association between these classes and it is often good to mark the possible number of objects so for example car usually has only one engine but it usually has more than two wheels these kind of things are nice to have we will have an example on this later and describe these associations clearly so there are different ways to describe you will soon see that so for example we will have associations between classes if we have employee and we have a company so this employee is working for a company so on the left side we are defining that this company can have one or more employees and on the right side we are defining that this employee employee can work for one or more companies at the same time similarly this manager can have zero to infinite amount of secretaries and there is a typo uh, but the secretary can work work for one or more managers so there there can be managers without secretaries but secretaries will have a manager and then company will have uh, will have a board of directors and the board of directors can work only in one company so the exact board of directors will not work for any other companies and the company will have only one board of directors uh, then we have this office space so some kind of a room or or something else and the office space will have one to infinite amount of employees that's fine there are work workforce working in a, in an off, uh, office and the employee can be part of a zero office or in 10 office or anything like that and then one person can be in several board of directories so john smith could work for uh, 
IBM, Facebook and Google board of directors, but then one board of directors could have only one to eight persons. So, well, one, only one, it's, it's quite small board of directors, but eight, eight persons, that's probably quite okay. And then there are these different arrows and, uh, and lines. First, aggregation. So, aggregation is a specialized association that describes how classes consist of other classes. So this means that he here the region is part of a country. So for example, we can have a Lappeenranta, which is part of Finland, or we could have a Kiev, which is part of Ukraine, or Moscow, which is part of Russia. And this, these regions cannot be part of two countries. So Lappeenranta can exist only in Finland and uh, Moscow only in, in Russia. But a country can have several regions. So Finland, we have a Lappeenranta and Lahti regions, for example. And in, in Germany, we have... Uh, 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 Berlin and Hamburg, for example. Uh, this kind of, so the country has something. It has regions here in, in this example. Aggregate is the part that describes the whole and aggregation is modeled by using a diamond shape. So this is the diamond shape. Uh, and uh, use aggregation if classes are part of an aggregate. Aggregate consists of other classes and if something controls the aggregate, it controls the part of aggregate. So basically, if something, for example, president here in Finland controls the country, it also controls in that sense the uh, regions like uh, Lahti and Lappeenranta. And aggregation is a specialized association. It is not wrong to use just the general associations, meaning that there would be line like it was here in the previous. There is no aggregation, it's just those basic association drawn by line. But this aggregation uh, makes developer a clearer picture that there are, uh, that the country here has these regions. And then there is very similar to aggregation, this composition. So composition is a strong aggregation. It means that if the aggregate is destroyed, all the parts are destroyed. So if we have a building and it has, for example, 10 rooms, and if the building is exploded, the missile hits it, all the rooms will be destroyed. And that, that's that's very true. So the rooms cannot exist without the building. If we have a car and it has an engine, we can take the engine out of the car and still the car exists and the engine exists. So this car and engine would use aggregate, not composition. But with building, uh, the room exists only in building, just like basically brains exist only in inside human. And there are two ways to model these kind of things. We can draw the uh, line, this composition line, this diamond that is it's fulfilled. Or we can set that the person has this address. It's basically meaning the same, but if you are using an umbrella, you will draw those lines. And then this generalization, which is basically in Java or any other object-oriented programming, it's, uh, it's uh, visualizing this inheritance. So, it is a relationship. So, table is a furniture. Mammal is an animal. This, this is the uh, inheritance part. 
So we might also have association classes, which means that sometimes an attribute relates to two different classes, but it doesn't fit to be part of either. And these both models here describe the same thing. For example, if student is registrating to some course, how would, where would be the grade? Would be with, with, with student or with course? Uh, it doesn't fit uh, either of those because student will get several dozens of grades in in university. So it's not in the uni uh, student class because it, the student class basically would have only one grade member variable. So it's, it's not there. Then again, if we have a course, let's say it's called object oriented programming, how the course would be responsible, what kind of grades are dozens of students getting? No, that doesn't sound either uh, good. So we are building another class, association class that handles the grade, but it's related to student and the course. We can have recursive associations. So there is class that has associations to itself. So basically a course can be prerequisite to another course. So you need to go uh, fundamentals of programming first and then you can join the object oriented programming. So the course object or, or the cla course class has a association to the course class and similarly folders in a computer uh, file system folders or, or directories they can have folders and files inside so and then then there is cases that where we have one-to-one -one association and basically we are avoiding them so it's it's pretty much pointless to have have these kind of a association that we have the student class and then we would have a student information class. This could be combined. We can use only student classes that has the name, address, email and birth, date, attribute. Uh, how do we identify attributes? So they are the information the class should maintain. In models, they should be very simple values, strings, numbers, and we are trying to avoid duplicates. If attributes form a close group, it's probably good to make a new class out of them. So do we want this kind of a car dealer that has name and cars? In a sense, yes, the car dealer is a good uh, class. Name is a good attribute. And then cars. Can it have a string called cars? No. Can it have the integer called cars? No. Uh, could it be like this? We had a car dealer which has name. Then there is a car manufacturer one, car model one, car manufacturer two. No, this doesn't sound good. But if we are creating a car dealer that has a name and then it consists of cars which have the attributes of manufacturer and model, this sounds good. So car dealer can have anything from zero to infinite cars and car can be uh, with one car dealer uh, at a time. So two car dealers uh, cannot own the same car simultaneously. What about class responsibilities? So uh, responsibility is something the system should do and each functional requirement needs to be tied to one of the classes. And if we have a class, then all the responsibilities should be related to each other. So we cannot have class, for example, a boat that would fly and go to space and sing a song. These are definitely not, not uh, responsibilities for a boat class. 
And in in this sense, we would need to divide the boat class into plane, plane and rocket classes if we want to fly and go to space. And if there is a class, if it and it doesn't have any responsibilities, it is probably useless. So we won't need classes that do not do anything. And if we have a, we would like to have a new responsibility and there is no class that could handle that, then we need to create a new class. And these responsibilities, they can be anything like reading and writing attributes, creating new instances, construction, the construction, reading and writing to the database, copying, conversation, conversion, transformation, calculation, navigation, search, and other things. So class can have very different responsibilities. So uh, space shuttle main computer needs to navigate back to Earth and to ISS and these kind of responsibilities. And then uh, student class should be possible to enroll to a, some kind of a course in, in university and these kind of things. And then how to define operations, so functionality to the class. So operations are needed to fulfill those responsibilities. And um, there can be multiple operations for one responsibility. Writing to a database first requires a connection to a database. It's probably a, uh, another operation to first connect and then, then just write to the database. And what has been learned? So uh, just to put this in a nutshell, uh, object-oriented programming is a different way of solving problems. And we are building objects and each object has responsibilities. And software requirements are fulfilled through the communication between these objects. And in a sense, object-oriented programming is a way to model or simulate the real world. We are not simulating the real world in a DNA level or uh, atom or proton level, but, but in, a, in a level that is suitable for the uh, problem we are trying to solve. And objects consists of state information and functionalities and of those functionalities are defined in the class it represents. And each object is of course concretion of a class. Uh, object ex executes its functionality based on the message it receives. So for example we had this uh, rocket that could launch only if it receives a uh, message true, then it will launch. Otherwise, it will only test itself. And understanding the message can be different depending on what object receives it. So, of course, different objects will work differently based on the message they receive. And classes can be organized in a hierarchy with an inheritance. This is very important in object-oriented programming in Java. Subclass can use the information and functionality from higher levels, very important. And object-oriented design resembles organizing independent parts into a working whole. We have an engine, we have uh, wheels, we have a driving wheel, we have a gearbox, we are building a car out of these objects and as a whole they will work and we will we are able to drive that car. And each unit is responsible of specific tasks so we don't need to know how the wheels are going on the road but they will do their job and we can use their um, their um, promises that they will roll on the road. The problem as a whole is solved with the use of multiple units and communication between them. So the driver will communicate with the driving wheel and clutch and brake 
and the throttle and then the engine will respond and the tires will move the car. So let's draw an example class diagram. Let's continue, consider the following case. There is a star base that builds rockets and is able to launch them. There are two types of rockets, Falcon 9 and Starship. Besides uh, internal, International Space Station, there is a Mars space where rockets can, uh, they are able to go. The rockets can transfer astronauts, cosmonauts, taikonauts, sisunauts or cargo. By the way, this sisunaut, it's, it's a um, Finnish astronaut. We don't have any astronauts in Finland, but when we will have a first one, it will be called sisunaut besides the official astronaut term. So let's draw this kind of a class diagram. So first we can start with the actual star base. So star base here. And then we have rockets. Let's build a rocket class. Rocket. And there was two types of rockets. Falcon 9 and Starship. Let's build a Falcon 9. Right here. And then we had the Starship. Like this. Seems suitable. Then there was this International, international Space Station and Mars bases were also mentioned. So ISS, International Space Station and Mars base and astronauts and cargo will also mention astronaut and cargo so these are pretty much the classes we want to use then let's uh, change this a bit so star base is, is one place where we can have rockets then we have two rockets then we have a Mars base and ISS. Let's have this Mars space here and ISS. Uh, astronauts and cargo. Let's try to build it so we can draw some lines. So, first of all, Starship is a rocket. So we use this inheritance generalization and draw a line from there and there so starship is a rocket is there anything else that we could use this generalizations mm, not quite so no then we would use this uh, aggregation let's see starbase has rockets yes now it went way over. Starbase has rockets. No, it's not true. Yes, so there is a bug in Let's try it again. Starbase has rockets like this. No. Like this. So. And then we have astronauts and cargo. So these uh, rockets can be with astronauts or cargo. And basically. If the rocket explodes, then the cargo and we can remove these, we don't need those. Um, if the rocket is exploding, then the cargo and astronaut is lost. As Umbrella has now bugged that we cannot use this out of the box, let's go and modify this association. And it's not composition, it's aggregation. Now it's correct diamond there. And then this attribute 
it's new not new attribute it's called rocket it's well basically it would be rockets as there are many rockets but it depends who is coding it's if it's better to have rockets or rocket but now it's rockets here and then we can change these attributes too so we won't have attribute new attribute but astronauts and the type is of course astronaut as it has no we want to modify also the other one gargo yes let's remove these So then there is still ISS and Mars base. Well, ISS can have rockets, yes. Definitely, so let's let's build a, like that. And Mars base can have also rockets, yes. And if ISS is destroyed, no, the rocket it's not it's not destroyed so let's try this should be aggregation this should be also aggregation it was already back and this is aggregation like this Now we have used all our classes, but can astronaut or cargo live only in rocket? No. Also, ISS can have or have, have astronauts. Starbase can have astronauts, and Mars base can have astronauts. So, astronaut, astronaut, and astronaut. So let's consider it like this that the cargo can live only in a rocket when it's taken out of rocket it's not cargo anymore then it's just a, for example computers and food So astronauts So it seems that Umbrella is changing these back to compositions all the time. But as the Sven star base is removed, then astronauts are not removed. They should not be. Well, when ISS is exploding, then the astronauts are also exploding. Let's think it like that. And Mars base, that, uh, Mars base, that's not the case. And if Mar Mars base is destroyed, then the rockets are not destroyed. ISS and rockets, no. Yeah, let's hope that those... will now stay and now you can see that we have a quite a lot of lines connections here so this is easily it easily becomes such that there are so many connections that it's not that easy anymore to move the classes so that one can see what's happening there uh, but this is this is kind of now we know what the classes are and how they handle so our star base should be able to handle astronauts and rockets ISS should also be able to handle uh, astronauts and rockets rockets handle cargo we have two oh, two different kind of rockets starship and uh, 
Falcon 9. Let's make them a diff different rocket so Starship a is able to land. And this is just a void. Is able to land. And uh, now, actually, these variables here, they are now private, but of course they should be protected as this is the super class to, to this uh, Starship and Falcon 9. So these are now protected. So these uh, classes can access those those variables. Yeah. And then mm, what else? Let's have a ISS. Let's just have a new attribute that called altitude. It just uh, in the girl. Let's say it's 440 kilometers. What else? Astronaut could have an operation called space do do space walk. Just like that. So this this could be our Save this. Yeah, this this could be our class diagram. And now, if we would like to develop the software based on this, we would see that if we are building a Starbase class, it should be ha it should have rockets and astronauts. If we would build a rocket class, this. Uh, uh, attributes should be protected so that the subclasses could access them and we can actually there is this uh, if you're using umbrella there is code we can uh, generate code from this if we want to generate C++ code or, or PHP or Java code this will generate you the code uh, if you want it's it's not useful anymore nowadays that much, but you can do that. But by by these kind of uh, things you can draw uh, draw things. But ah, one thing I am not have, have not been discussing. So let's think of think it like that: that the rocket and the ISS can have only one rocket at a time. So we can see here we have roles. And, and we can have only one rocket at IS, ISS. Actually, there can be, of course, zero. And the rocket, is it now going to the right direction? No, rocket can be on ISS. On one or zero ISS. And, and, and the ISS can have only one, one or zero rockets. So now we have defined that. And then similarly, if we think about uh, cargo, so ISS, a rocket can have a lot of cargo or zero cargo, but the cargo can be only one on one rocket like this. So this cargo can exist on only one rocket on on and on this rocket there can be zero or whatever amount of cargo. Yeah. So this is how you draw class diagrams with different uh, let's say composition and aggregation and then generalization which is this inheritance part. But I think this is enough how to draw class diagram. So as a conclusion, UML is the language to build models to help visualize and design object-oriented programs. 
Uh, drawing helps one to understand what are the responsibilities of the class and how the classes collaborate. Code can be generated from class diagrams and class diagrams can be generated from the code.